Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master of storytellers, Damon Runyon. And this one, the idol of Miss Sarah Brown. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, maybe you never hear of a citizen who is known as the Sky. And also, maybe you never hear of Miss Sarah Brown. It is a fact that any character along Broadway will lay more than a little six to five that the Sky and Miss Sarah Brown are as far apart as the North and South Pole. This is because the Sky is a gambler, and Miss Sarah Brown is a mission worker and a 100% all right doll. But they do get together, and how this is done is a story that hardly anyone believes. But it is true, and I will tell you about it in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... The Idol of Miss Sarah Brown. As I am saying, Miss Sarah Brown is a mission worker, and the sky is a gambler. How he gets that name is because there is no limit on a bet he will take or make. The sky is the limit with him. And he is very smart. Like the day we are at the polo grounds at the ball game. The game is over, and the sky and me are walking across the diamond when we are approached by a character who is called Bates. Now, this Bates is a hard citizen, and he is also a big better. The sky has eaten peanuts, which he pulls from his pocket, and we are near second base when Bates comes up to us. And the scene is as follows. Hi, up Broadway. Hi, Hello, Bates. Sky. Oh. Well, Sky, you win or lose on the game today. I win? Not me. I lose a hundred on the game. That's so. I win five. Have a peanut. Thanks. Broadway? Oh, thanks. Ah. Uh, no. It was only that punk throw from second to home that makes me lose the C note. A good throw would catch the runner and I'm in. I get a bad break. Uh, that's a pretty big throw from second to home plate. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was a pretty good ball player when I was a kid. Not so bad now. Yeah? Yeah, and I still say if the throw is good, the Dodgers do not get the run, and I am in. Hmm. Bet I could make the throw from second to home plate. So what? Anybody with an arm could do it. Bet I could throw one of those peanuts from second base to home plate. You're crazy. A peanut is too light to throw that far. Maybe. Wait a minute, Sky. You are now standing on second base. You are willing to bet you could throw a peanut from here to home plate? Mm Mm-hmm. In the air, not roll it on the ground? In the air. You're crazy, Sky. A peanut is a very light object and would not travel 20 feet through the air. I'm willing to make a bet. Tell you what, Bates. You've had a bad day. I'm in a good mood. I'll lay you three to one. I can toss a peanut from here to the plate. You serious, Sky? Very. I have exactly 100 potatoes in my pocket. Will you put 300 against it? Mm Mm-hmm. Broadway? Here. Here's my three C's. And here is my C note. Now, go ahead, Sky. Toss the peanut. You, uh, you don't mind if I pick out a big one, huh? As big as you want. Hmm. Does, uh, does this one look satisfactory to you, Bates? Sure, go ahead. Toss Would you like to try it first with this peanut? I'm willing to bet you you can't do it. No, you don't, Sky. You make the bet. You pick the peanut. You throw it. Like you say, I make the bet. All right, Broadway, stand back. Here goes. It is impossible, but it is done. It, It went into the stands. On the fly over home plate. I told you I was a pretty good ball player. I, uh, I will now take the C note. There is something fishy about this. Broadway is a witness that I offered the peanut to you first. Is that right, Broadway? It is very correct. So long, Bates. I do not understand this. I do not understand it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It was too easy. I do not see how you do it. Well, Broadway, it just so happens that I have one peanut in my pocket that is weighted with lead. Lead? Lead? <laughs> How does it happen that there is a peanut with lead in it? They are usually full of peanuts. Well, I just happen to have it with me in case I want to make just such a bet. However, I offered it to Bates first, so I didn't cheat. Mm, That is right. It is a fine point, but it is correct. 
Sky, you are a very smart man. No. Not smart, Broadway. Just careful. Because my father once told me something. Like what? I remember that he said to me a long time ago, he said, Son, someday you're going to meet a man who will pull out a new deck of cards with the seal still on it. He'll offer to bet you that the jack of spades will jump out of the deck and squirt cider in your ear. <laughs> Do not take that bet, my father says. Because as sure as you're a foot high, you'll get an ear full of cider. Well, I tell you that to show you what kind of a citizen the sky is. And he is honest. It is just that sometimes he ensures a bet. But there is no character from Broadway to Los Angeles who will not take the sky's word. It is as good as wheat in the bin. He is never crooked, and he hates citizens who are. But one day, we are walking along Broadway when suddenly he stops and points. Broadway. Look. Huh? Where? Who is that? Oh, I see no one but Harry the horse. And you need no introduction to him. No, 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 not Harry. I'm talking about the doll. What doll? The one in uniform. Oh, that one. Oh, that is Miss Sarah Brown. Miss Sarah Brown. I don't get the uniform. She's working for a mission. What does she do? What she is doing now. She collects money for the mission. Oh, she's quite a lovely doll. 100% all right. Now, I take it you know her, huh? Just from seeing her around. Oh. If you are thinking of meeting her, it is better that you put it out of your mind. Why? Because she has nothing to do with citizens of our ilk. Oh? She doesn't like us, huh? Not very much. She does not even accept money for her mission from us. Mm-hmm. She's very young to be doing such work. Mm, there is no accounting for tastes. Oh, she's the kind of doll I'd like to meet. If you like, I will attempt an introduction. No, never mind. But you are just saying that you... I know, I know. Forget it. I guess her type would think we're a bunch of bad citizens. Yeah, I guess so. Broadway, where were you born? Right here. Uh-huh. I was born in Colorado. Know where that is? Is it possible to reach it by the subway? <laughs> not quite. Then I do not know. Well, what I was going to say was... Yeah? Sometimes I remember the farm, the people. And I remember there was a girl. A doll? Yeah, as you say, a doll. I liked her, Broadway. She... She looked a lot like this Miss Sarah Brown. Is there a possibility this doll you speak of and Miss Brown could be one and the same? No, Broadway. There's no possibility. No possibility at all. Oh, I see. Okay, Broadway, let's move on. I have a date with a poker game. <laughs> Well, I do not see the sky for a couple of days after that. But one night, I get a funny report that the sky is missing quite a few big games. Now, that is not like him. So I nose around, and I learn that he goes quite often to the mission where Miss Sarah Brown works. I do not believe this. And I am willing to lay more than a little six to five. It is not true. So I go to the mission to see with my own eyes. Sure enough, in the mission sits the sky. I walk over to him, and the scene is as follows. Broadway, what are you doing here? I could ask the same question of you, Scott. Yeah, sit down. Here? In here? Well, if you want to stay, sit down. Okay. Why'd you come here? I hear something very funny. Oh, about me, huh? That is correct. <laughs> well, it's true. Miss Sarah Brown, huh? Miss Sarah Brown. She knows who you are? No. And Broadway... What, Sky? If by any chance it should slip from your lips about what or who I am, I'd be very angry and take steps, you understand? I understand. Here she comes. Hello there. Good evening, Miss Brown. How are you, Mr. Sky? Oh, fine, just fine. Oh, uh, this, uh, this is a friend of mine. His name is Broadway. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Broadway. We get so few people who come here. It's good to see a new face. Business is not good, I take it? <laughs> no, it's not good. I guess people aren't very interested in their souls. Maybe people don't know they have them until it's too late, huh? You've been very kind, Mr. Skye. Your contributions have helped us so much. The new organ is you are doing. What? 
Maybe I do not hear right. You hear right. Mr. Skye has been more than generous. It's been more than a pleasure, Miss Brown. Oh, please call me Sarah. And you have a first name, surely? I... Just... Just call me Skye. Everybody does. But why? It's such an odd name. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, just call me that, huh? All right. Uh, Sarah, maybe after the mission closes, uh, we... You and I, I... Oh, what I mean is maybe a, a cup of coffee. Oh, we have coffee here. Please stay and have some. In here? Why not? All right. Well, I, I guess I got to be gone. Oh, no, please. Stay with us. Yeah, stay, Broadway. But... Miss Brown asked you to stay, Broadway. And I'd like it very much if you did. Good. That's settled, then. And now, uh, if you'll excuse me for a minute, I have some things to do. I never see a doll look at me the way she looks at you, Skye. Broadway, I've made a lot of money in my racket, but you know what? What? I'd be willing to drop every potato I own if I didn't get it the way I did. Well, that is that. It is easy to see that the sky is over the boards, but good. Every night he goes down to the mission. And every night he stays for coffee with Miss Sarah Brown. All the citizens are talking about it and are not able to figure the angle. But I know that the sky and Miss Brown are in love. But I wonder what is going to happen when she finds out about it. I find out one night when the sky, me, and some of the boys are sitting in Mindy's. Suddenly, the sky looks up and says, Sarah, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. I, uh... I, I, I was just coming to the mission. I'd rather you wouldn't come there anymore. Maybe I better leave. No, stay, Mr. Broadway. I want to say something. Maybe you'd be interested, too. Will you sit down, Sarah? Yes. Yes, I will. How big a laugh have you had, Mr. Skye? Laugh? It was easy, wasn't it? What do you mean? It was so simple. I was so simple. Oh, look, Sarah, You I... were so generous to us. You were a very big man among all the little people. Is that what you came here to say? Not quite all. I found out tonight who you are and what you are. I wouldn't have minded knowing who. But what you are, I can't accept that. Miss Brown, I've never cheated. I've never done anything dishonest in my life. You waited until you found me before you became dishonest. I am not dishonest. I call it that, Mr. Skye. But I'm not as big a fool as you think. You thought I'd accept you because of what you've done, but I won't. I despise you. As... As much as I liked you before, I despise you now. Maybe you'll tell me why. I don't have to tell you. Your own conscience, your own soul will do that. I've had men look at me before. I knew why. But they were honest men, Mr. Skye. They didn't pretend to be anything other than what they were. You did. I gave the money because I wanted to. I'm sorry we can't return the money you gave us. But I can ask you to stay away from the mission. And me. That's all, Mr. Skye. Goodbye. I never hear a doll talk like that before. Yeah. I thought it was a sure thing. But it looks like I got an ear full of cider... Well, you may think that is the end of the story But it is not And how it ends is something for the books And I will tell you about it in a minute Back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Idol of Miss Sarah Brown. Well, like I am saying, Miss Sarah Brown comes into Mindy's that night and ticks off the sky. Furthermore, she has nothing to do with him from then on. And when the sky meets Miss Brown on the street, he keeps walking straight ahead. And she does likewise. Then one night, I accompanied the sky to a little game at Nathan Detroit's place, where a few of the boys are playing at dice. 
And what happens there is something that everybody still talks about. It is like this. We walk in and watch for a couple of minutes. Then the sky walks over to Bates, who is also watching the game. Milky and Willie has the dice, and he is rolling. The sky says as follows to Bates. How's he doing, Bates? Milky, I wish I have his luck. He's hot, huh? Like a firecracker. Six passes in a row. Uh-huh. Hiya, Milk here. Ah, hello, Sky. You are going to play? Maybe. Stick with me and make a million. Here they go. Ah. <laughs> that makes seven in a row. <laughs> I wish I had your luck. How does it happen you're not playing, Bates? It's because I have no potatoes. I am out of the lettuce. In short, I am broke. But if I have some... I would ride with Milk here. <laughs> ride with me and make a million. How about it, Sky, will you? Maybe later, not now. All right, here it goes. <laughs> six, a little six. Easiest point to make. <laughs> he can make that without rolling the dice. You think so, Bates? <laughs> the way he's been going, I couldn't do that to save my soul. What did you say? I said I couldn't do that to save my soul. Yeah, Milk here. Uh, yeah? Hold it a minute, don't throw. What? When I'm hot? I want to get down to bet. Sure, I tell you, ride with me and you're in. I'll bet against you making that six. You will bet against my making a three-way point? I will. How much? One thousand dollars. I hear you right. You will bet a thousand against my rolling a six? I'll bet you don't. But I'll bet against Bates. I tell you, there's nothing in my pocket but fingers. And I'm not sure about those. I'll bet a thousand against your soul. My, my soul? That's right. If Milkier doesn't throw a six, I win. And your soul goes to the mission. My what? Goes where? Your soul goes to the mission. Wait a minute. I do not like to have anybody's soul riding on my dice. It's his soul, Milkier. Well, Bates, what do you say? Well, Bates? How you feel, Milkier? You better make up your mind soon before I cool off. A grand against my soul. If I lose, I go to Miss Sarah Brown's mission. That it? That's it. I... Well... Okay. You got a bet. And if you lose, you better keep your bet. You got it? We will see to it that he does not welsh, Sky. You feel all right still, Milkier? It is a three-way point, and I feel good. You got a bet, Sky. <laughs> Go ahead, Milkier. Roll him. Right. Come on. <sighs> a five. Come on, Milkier. We'll do better this time. Looks like you owe me a grand, Sky. Here it is. Pick it up. It's yours. I got a thousand bucks. I will now get in the game. That is a bad bet you made, Sky. It's worth it. And don't forget the night is still young. Well, like the Sky says, the night is still young. And it is not long before Bates takes the dice because now he has a thousand potatoes. And what happens is that he hits a streak and wins. He figures it is his night. And it looks to be a fact because he makes one pass after another. Finally, he throws a four, which is a hard point to make. And it is at this point that he looks at the sky and says as follows. Sky, I will take the odds off you on this one. I know you don't want my dough. I know you only want my soul for Miss Sarah Brown. Is that right? That's right. Why? I am now in the money and my price goes up. Will you lay me 10,000 against my soul that I do not make this for? It's a bet. 10 G's against his soul? That's it, Milkier. Here we go, Sky. Uh... Look at that. He makes a four. Double deuce. Looks like you owe me 10,000, Sky. So it does. You have 10 G's, do you not? Did anyone ever say I welched on a bet? You're as good as Times Square. Broadway. Yes, Guy. Do me a favor, will you? Run over to my hotel with this key. I'll call the clerk. Tell him to open the safe and take out my money. When you bring it over here. Well, sure. Uh, how many potatoes you got there? About a hundred thousand. A hundred grand? <whistles> What's your idea, Sky? It's my idea to keep betting against anyone who wants to bet. Who keeps the dice? You do, Bates. Until when? Until I win your soul for Miss Sarah Brown, or you win all my money. Well, what do you say? <laughs> I say you got yourself a deal. Okay. Broadway, get going. <laughs> Sky 
So I get Sky's money from the hotel. And it is quite a bundle. And it is not long before news of what's going on gets around us then. And Nathan Detroit's place is packed with citizens. And the sky is taking all bets. Every character who has a fin, a sawbuck, or a deuce is laying it on a line against the sky. All the sky bets for is the guy's soul. But Bates is plenty hot and never misses. It is not long before the sky's money is down to a very thin shadow of its former self. Then the scene is as follows. How much you got left, Sky? I figure it, uh, 5,000. Wanna keep it for a steak or... I'll bet it. There's only one thing wrong with that. No? What's wrong with it? At this point, my soul is worth more than five grand. It has been increasing in value right along. What's your pitch? I'll take the five... And you mark her for 20,000. 20 grand? Sky, you're nuts if you take that bet. Maybe so, Milky. You'll be in the hole. You'll owe that if you lose. I'll still take the bet. But why? Listen, Sky. I figure one soul sent to Miss Sarah Brown is worth it. One guy. Just one. Throw the dice, Bates. Okay. This we watch is Bates I shake the dice. Oh, we know that I if the Sky loses stop. this bet, he's yes, cooked. Sir. But I see that he is watching Bates with a funny look on his face. And he is reaching slow-like for an inside coat pocket. I back away because I want no part of fireworks. I am not able to figure what Sky is doing or what is wrong. And then, Bates rolls. A natural. A seven. You're very lucky tonight, Bates. Like you say, I am very lucky. You owe me 20 G's. I owe you 20 G's. Maybe. Huh? What do you mean, maybe? Just that. Bates... Good evening, everyone. Holy cats, Miss Sarah Brown. Good evening, Mr. Skye. Good evening, Miss Brown. Hey, what are you doing here? How'd you get in? I walked in. I see almost everyone is here. Yes, that's right. How many souls have you won for me? None. I seem to be about half out of luck. I see. Don't you think you're taking too much upon yourself? I can win all the souls I need myself. I tried to help. In your way. In my way. Have you ever thought of your own soul, Mr. Skye? Sometimes. I see. By the way, when I heard this was going on, I wondered about something. What? Are you risking your soul on these bets or just your money? My money. But not your soul. All right, Mr. Skye. I'll gamble with you. What do you mean? I know something about gambling. I should. It ruined my father and my brother. Broke my mother's heart. Yes, I know something about gambling. Will you gamble with me, Mr. Skye? Look, Miss Brown. Maybe you better go. No. I'll gamble with you on the same terms that you gambled with everyone here. I will bet one dollar against your soul. That's all I have. <laughs> one buck. One Shut buck. Shut up, Nokia. Miss Brown, it's a very small bet. It's a very small soul. Bates. Yeah? Give her the dice. Huh? Hey, listen, I don't... Bates, give her the it. dice. But I'm... You heard me, my... Bates. Sure, Sky. Here you are, Miss Brown. Thank you. Do we have a bet, Mr. Skye? One dollar against the life you lead. One dollar against your soul. Will you keep the bet? I never welsh. That's right, Miss Brown. He's good for it. That is correct, Miss Brown. All right. Roll the dice. Eleven. She wins. There is a dead hush. Miss Brown looks up at the sky... The sky looks at Miss Brown with a little smile on his lips. And then he says, I never will shun a bet. You're a fool. You're a fool. I love you, Miss Sarah Brown. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Let me out of here. Please let me out. Yeah, it's like I said. I'm half out of luck. But the half I've got left, it's pretty good. Well, that is that. But it is not, really. The payoff comes some weeks later. 
And what the payoff is, I will tell you in a minute. down Broadway, and who do I see but the sky? But now he is wearing a mission uniform, and he is looking happy and better than I ever see him look. He is walking with Miss Sarah Brown when he sees me. He, he says something to her, and she goes into a store. Then the sky comes over to me. Hello, Broadway. Oh, Sky, how goes it? Oh, fine. For the first time in my life, I'm, I'm happy, Broadway. And Miss Brown? She is Mrs. Sky. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, Bates is looking for you. Is he? The collector's bet, I guess, huh? It would seem to be the case. I owe him nothing. I've got those dice we used that night, Broadway. Huh? Wait a minute. I remember. I see you look at him funny-like. Sure. Phony dice? Phony dice. But Broadway, yeah? don't do anything about it. But he uses phony dice. That is a crime. No, no, Broadway. You see, Mrs. Skye thinks she beat me at my own game for my soul. I wouldn't like her to think anything else. Because this time, I didn't get the ear full of cider. <laughs> And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, The Idol of Miss Sarah Brown. Listen in again next week to... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the stories adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. This is a Mayfair production. Mm -hmm.